Good morning. Oh, good morning, Brad. How you doing, man? Ah, I'm gonna share my screen with you. You see what's there? Yeah, it looks like you've been watching some YouTube, man. It's kind of a little early, but yeah, no, I see what you're sharing. Have at it. Oh, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be watching anything. What I do is is just kind of scroll down through it. And, you know, I used to go to like a CNN or whatever else, but everything's so it's changed so much now that I don't. It's it's too small. But when I go to YouTube, like on my computer here, see, I can see big things going on. You know, I can see. You know, like usually this time of day, this thing kind of knows what I'm doing. So I'm usually listening to this little six thirty nine hertz thing. You know, because that's that's what I use to work. But now this thing gives me the news. I can see what's going on. You know, I can see about Richard uh, over there in Delphi and I can uh, I can see about working on a uh, four wheelers and pathetic Trump has other meltdown over criminal charges and all kinds of shit. You know, it's kind of gives me a an idea what I was going on for the day and the things that I enjoy. But anyway, what are you up to this morning? Well, I mean, now. I would consider exactly what you're doing, what I do in the mornings, too. It's what you and I used to would see our grandparents or fathers do, just glancing at the morning paper. It's just that really quick overview of did anything important happen, did anything I need to know. And yeah, yeah, you know, but then if nothing happens, I still normally check it, but it's mostly for like Colbert or the Kimmel show or something more, you know monologue type stuff because i just ain't into all that <laughs> dang it yeah i like i like the first you know the first monologue thing but now i watch all that stuff in clips i i, I can't watch a whole show but i mean i like you said i like the in clips as you can tell from my listening habits that uh, what's all on the screen i went over and clicked on the news tab and just kind of looking at what else going on this i mean it's all red white and blue america you know it's all this it's going into an election year so they're Everybody's trying to get their views up. They're trying to make that money, election money. That's what they're trying to do. <laughs> right, but normally, yeah, that's still just my everyday. I just kind of glance and look at whichever. I mean, that kind of stuff. I don't say that crap. It ain't worth my time this far in the morning. Hell, I'm barely awake. I ain't going to pay attention to what the orange guy said. Don't really care what the man said. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> And, you know, some of the other politicians the exact same way, but I, I still try to pay enough attention to know what's going on. And, uh, but it's still kind of tough sometimes in the morning, but you start your day in certain ways and you get certain habits the way you start them. And when they are disrupted, your whole day is just disrupted. Do you feel that way too sometimes? Oh, man. I'm just trying to look through and see what I was going on, man. You know, uh, I've, I've been listening to a lot of these things. Uh, I share them with everybody, but, you know, you you probably know about them. I think you do. But, like, there's all kinds of different things. You know, you can get anything from, like, a particular uh, Hertz. Um, you could get, like, uh, an ambiance. Like, the one showing now is, like, a 1940s, a summer evening sitting on a porch, and it's raining with music playing in the back, you know, and, I mean, just all kinds of stuff, you know, uh, that, that you could do just kind of give you the ambiance to do what you do. You know, sometimes like with me, I whenever I'm working and I work at a computer a lot, I don't want something that's I don't want to hear voices in there unless they're just like going, oh, uh, oh uh, you know, something like that. But I don't want to hear talking like we're doing now early when I'm working. You know, I can't. It's distracting for me because I'll be paying attention to it. But now I like to hear, and you know, like this, uh, like that again, that 639 uh, track. I just love that thing. There's other variations of it. Well, that's what kind of gets me through the day. But now everybody has to do. Do you, uh, do you find yourself listening to music all day, or do you find yourself listening to, to uh, words? Or I don't know. What do you do? Uh, well, it mostly it kind of depends. I mean, you know, if I'm driving, uh, these days I prefer to listen to audiobooks. And uh, I'm more to, more to the sci-fi fantasy side of it. You know, I, I know you're more historical and, you know, and that kind of thing. And, hey, to each their own. Uh, I sent you an example of a book. Now, and I've listened to this before. It's the Coban series. And we've talked about several other series, you know, because we was looking up 
chat GPT AI images trying to play with that system some. But yeah, driving these days, I do audio books, uh, therapy, and you know, just me just walking around the house and stuff that just Bluetooth, just blasting whatever songs happen to come on the Discovery Mix. You know, uh, YouTube is nice enough to you can you know make a few selections and favorite them and they'll kind of play songs it's almost exactly what you want you don't always like them but you can get enough thumbs up that you can create a really nice track and just dance your little butt off the entire house away while you're just washing dishes and doing a number of things <laughs> That's what you do. <laughs> yeah. Hey Donald, what's the name of that? Uh, what is the name of that series you were just talking about? The what kind of series? You You're talking reading? about the Coban series? Like C O B A N? K O B A N. It's uh, okay. humanity is pretty advanced. We achieve peace to a certain extent, and then outside forces come in, and they won't. To battle someone. Anyway, it's about, you know, gene manipulation and the, you know, the ingenuity of man when, when they became. Okay. okay what are some other, is it a, a Coban? What are some other series? What are the words? Uh, what are the words are associated with Coban inside of there? Is it, is it a, it's a book series? What it is? Yes, it's a book series. <clears throat> is it also a TV series? No, it's not a TV series. Is it by Stephen W. Bennett? Yes, Steve Bennett. Uh, there's several of them. Let's see, the Mark of Coban is book number two. Uh, you, you know, I mean, it's a, like a six series series, but it's K O B A N and it's by Stephen W. Bennett. I mean, it's a very involved series and there's lots of technical stuff involved, but at the same time, it's within the realm of what we could do today, even if it's like, yeah, okay, well, yeah, a few hundred years ahead, but it's still those type things. Go ahead. No, man, I was just coughing. Oh. Uh, uh, I'm looking at two here. I'm just trying to look and see. I, I couldn't find what I wanted to find on um, uh, YouTube, so I went over to Audible. Yeah. And, uh, and well, we're, right now, I'm at uh, Coban, The Mark of Coban, Volume 2. Yeah, that's the one I'm currently in, but just Coban is the name of the actually first book. You know, The Mark of Coban is Volume Number 2. Yeah, I got you. Like a six series thing, you know. I mean, it's an epic. About 22 hours of listening per book, which I'm not in a hurry, so it's okay. <laughs> oh, no, no, there, there's several that I've gotten into that are many. Uh, hell, I've gotten into some Stephen King ones that were just 100 hours or so. And, oh, right. I mean, yeah. and then some of that Civil War shit I got into was. 40 right. times three. Jeez, there's a huge amount of hours. You can get invested in these things, man. It's a lot of writing and a lot of reading. You think about how much time it takes someone to write a thousand page book. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it's worth the investment in the series, especially whenever you're interested in it because, you know, hey, if you think, well, hey, Stephen King wrote this uh, Civil War thing, it's about 100 hours. I'll be like, Civil War? Yeah. No magic, fantasy, nothing like that. Nope. Ain't interested at all. Sorry, bud. <laughs> yeah. mm. Mm. But no, I, you know, it goes back to the mindset when you don't want to listen to it and stuff. But now I've seen the stand, I've read the stand, I've done some of the classics, but I'm still more of a fantasy, sci fi, you know, type thing. Got a few more of the classics, you know, Roger Zeleny and McCaffrey. Uh, shoot, even Heinlein. I mean, there's so many of them that are just the imagination of these authors is what inspired me to be who I am. I mean, I think we discussed because that is like 
a young man walking down a library shelf just wondering at the imagination that's in these shelves. And it was just covered with books. And that was it. That that was between milking cows and going to school and this and that. I read books. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and what I'm what you're seeing in the background is the books that they're in my library on here. Um a lot of mine is uh uh, it's kind of like my YouTube there. It's kind of like I, I, there's a lot of things about ancient mammals. There's the Delphi murders. Well, lots, lots of um, uh, lots and lots of things about history. You mentioned a little bit ago. I love history, but I love all kinds of history. Like yeah. there, right there is the rise and fall of the Third Reich. I mean, if you look at listen to that whole thing. Uh, Jesus Christ, how many hours is that thing? Let's just go see. But anyway, uh, Mathematical Universe. I mean, there's a lot of shit that I'm listening to. And I, and I just kind of move back and forth. I'm in no hurry for any of them. I'm just yeah. reading through. And the ones that I really like, I'll listen to more. But like right there, if I had to, like one of my favorites uh, in, in recent years, and I can't get with this one freaking book on Audible. And I've contacted people in fact, I'm going to send her a follow-up email. It's been one year. But now, I, 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 I'm trying to get Robert J. Connolly's more of his work put out there. Uh, and I loved his. I mean, I loved his, I love his writing. He's a, He died back in 2014, and he was a Native American. He was Cherokee, and he had these most fucking unique things, uh, storylines. And, oh, my Lord, let me see. I tell you what, when we're talking about that, we're talking about uh, books, and you take it over for a minute. I gotta go. I gotta go see that. Uh, I gotta go check my email and see if I could figure out uh, how to get a hold of that lady again. Well, I mean, if you're just talking about authors and books, I mean, again, I'm just more of a sci-fi fantasy person. I mean, when you sit there and you look at it, I've read Alan L. Wode, very big sci-fi person. You know, uh, Heinlein. Uh, the robot laws. I mean, you pick it. I've read a lot of it, but it's still just the imagination that gets you out of your head. You know, I had enough of everyday life every day, so I enjoyed reading outside of that. You know, the history stuff. I mean, hey, history is important, and if folks love it, I want them to read it, pay attention to it, because if you don't learn from it, you're doomed to repeat it. So the history is important, and it, without going into any of the, well, it isn't the right history. It's the crap you were taught. Okay, just be done with that. <laughs> you know, I ain't going into that. But yeah, it, but I had enough of real life every day. So yeah, I went to. Uh, let's see. Gosh, I wish my head was clear so I could actually talk but you know hey the dragon riders of pern again that was Anne mccaffrey novels uh the zeleny novels that was the ambers the nine treasures and ambers trumps of doom uh you get the passive rufus oh that has been a fantabulous series still waiting for that book number three and it's been 10 years in the waiting the guy started out just unbelievably writing everybody liked this man's writing the Name of the Wind and A Wise Man Fears. That's the first two books. And we've been waiting forever for book number three. Ten plus years. He's still riding his little happy fine, but I've done got the point of like, yeah, you've done lost me. I ain't worried about it. If it ever comes out, I'll read it. <laughs> but now he's published some, some novellas, you know, very small, short novels trying to fill in the gap and it's like no, I, don't, I don't want you to fill in the gap i want you to finish this damn series <laughs> it's what i want you to do <laughs> yeah. but it's called the king killer trilogy trilogy three books there's only been two <laughs> but they are fantastic reads I, if you want to start out with just a young man growing into himself and the way he overcomes his tragedies and grows beyond awesome series his adventures unbelievable but 
there's still not an ending. And hey, I can make my own up, but I'm listening to this person's story. You're telling the story. I just want to hear the ending, please. Yeah. So yeah, you can remember some of that. Go ahead. Uh, well, I'm well. While you've been talking, I've enjoyed it, and I've been writing too. I've been uh, uh I sent this lady a follow up email, and I put Lisa, Happy New Year. I just wanted to let that bug I put in your ear a year or so ago uh, give you a reminder of how of how good you will feel to let William Sturdivant read Robert J. Colley's Medicine War. Oh yeah. I gotta work on that a little bit. So I'm sending this lady a, a message. I'm trying to get this book in audio. I I have the book, but I see the reason why I like Audible is because of the fact that I I can't see as well as I used to. Uh but I'm gonna tell you right now, to me, one of the one of the great books is uh that I've listened to a lot was that the invention of yesterday. I've listened to that. Uh, two or three times. So now, like a lot of times, this thing is say five hours and 43 minutes, but it, I've listened to it several times. Sapiens, I've listened to that a lot. Um, the ancient history of, of ancient Egypt. I love all that type stuff. I love anything about uh, Abraham Lincoln. Um, and um, well, I read the president, learned about the presidents of the, uh, of the United States of America. In fact, the two most visible presidents of the United States of America. And I would say that would be George uh, Washington and Abraham Lincoln. Uh, both of them were, um, they have associations with whiskey on my bourbon trail. You know, I, I'd never really done just a, a bourbon thing, you know, and I kind of, I relapsed intentionally to, to go on a bourbon trail. I know, I'm tired of it now, but all the presidents of, uh, uh, the uh, United States of America, those two right there in particular were big. There, there was Their life coincided with whiskey. In fact, George Washington, how I really got started into reading about bourbon was George Washington and his distillery. He had the largest distillery in the in the continental United States of America at the time he, that he died. And, 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 and uh, that Jim Beam whiskey is uh, called Knob Creek is named after a place where, uh, you know, where Abraham Lincoln grew up part of his childhood there in uh and uh right there on Knob Creek right there which is actually the name of the place that they lived on so anyway so I mean there's the, the, in the whiskey rebellion which uh George Washington was tied up in and how whiskey has funded America and how it's you know uh, 920 billion dollars a year or more uh of our economy I mean it's, it's huge it's huge it's huge it's huge it's huge uh, but anyway, that's how I got into, you know, reading is how I got there. A lot of things that I do is, is, uh, is, is, is that I start out reading about it. In fact, I read about everything that I ever do. In fact, the weird thing is like, even with the stand, when I first read it back in the early nineties, my, uh, girlfriend had, a they, they lived on the tree streets, you know, in other words, a residential area with just little bitty streets that you can drive on and walk down, you know, it's just no, no, hardly any vehicles on most of them, you know. But she also had a moped up in the garage that no one used. And I got the darn thing running. And I was like, also, coincidentally, reading The Stand. And uh, and part of that book, they were riding through the seat, you know, these abandoned areas with uh, their mopeds and motorcycles and stuff. And, man, I got off into a fantasy world, you know, in my tw early 20, I think like 21 years old, 2021. 20, and I'm riding through there and I've been reading this book and I'm riding through these back streets and, you know, I thought I did something big by getting that moped going. And it's a whole big fantasy thing, man. It was fun for me. I had a I had a beautiful time doing it. Uh, but now I did have a girlfriend. It sounds very nerdy for someone to like, oh, God, I'm reading a book. And I'm going to go out around a moped just like they're doing the book, you know. But it was. Well, uh, yeah, not it really. Experience. Especially if you remember the old joke about certain mopeds and certain women. <laughs> you know the joke I'm speaking of. <laughs> I don't think I do, but don't talk about it right now. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, I probably don't want about it. No, tell me about it. Tell me about it. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you know, back when we were younger, and again, this goes back to, now look, I like curvy women, but there was the old thing, as shallow as it was, is fat girls and mopeds. They may be fun to ride, but you don't want the friends to see them. That was the joke 
way back then. <laughs> okay well anyway <laughs> yeah i mean there's all i mean there was i'm gonna tell you this culture has changed a lot since the 70s i was sitting there you know we were talking about that you know creole motion and all and all the stuff that our grandparents used i mean all the stuff that they had these remedies and stuff of course now you know we have totally different stuff that lasts a lot of it's just totally different world and i thought about in the past you know about history you know like it like the other side of history the day to life of the ancient world is listed there on the screen and like they had all their different ways of living. And if you looked at Utsi, the ice man, he had his way of living. And all these human beings had all the little stuff that they had to help them get through the day, whether it be mushrooms or alcohol or like George Washington and them in their time, which at that time they drank voluminous amounts of alcohol. Today we drink so many gallons, they drink like 13 times more. I mean, it was just unbelievable. I'm talking about men, women, children. And, you know, for a preponderance of reasons. I mean, there's like there was the water was of not good, uh, good supply. It was they had got, you know, fancy water systems that cleans water up yet, you know, and, you know, and it was in, in more abundance. Uh, you know, it was easier to, to haul around, you know, you know, for your bucks. You got a little bit of uh, nutrition in it, a little some barley in it. It's the food, one of the food groups. But anyway, so did they, you know, the daily life, you know, of course, there's another book about another drink right there on the screen is uh, tequila. And I've studied it. Believe me, so I, I, those drinks um, in their history is what's interesting to me. And of course, I wanted to experience a little bit of it. But other things around here after this, you know, the Civil War, I, a lot of that. Uh, there, now, you mentioned some things in there you'll see every, scattered throughout my book list is stuff like, you know, get organized do more with less and you know atomic habits and all that kind of stuff and i you know I, I like that stuff but my mind seems to wonder on other things um huey p huey p long i don't know if you remember him there's a, the the rise and fall of bur uh rebirth of american whiskey bourbon the story of bourbon civil war the home distillers workbook wicked and witchy the podcast i don't even know what that is now there's a lot of stuff by uh uh Alan Watts in here. Now I also just redid my phone and I've just started downloading things in no particular order. So there's, there's no rhyme or reason to this. Um, and like, I just changed phones and trying to get everything downloaded. But, uh, but anyway, what do you want to read in, in, in this new year? I mean, if you plan anything, I mean, I've got some ones I want to finish, but what are you thinking about what you want to read this year? Is there anything you said, well, by God, I'm going to read that even though it's out of my wheelhouse. <laughs> No, absolutely not. I, all I'm waiting is I just wait for each day. It's like, well, anything new to read? Nope. Well, let's see. Let me go back and read a classic. Hey, I reread a ton of books. Now, I read lots of new things, but they're still kind of down that same stripe. And, uh, but whenever it's just like, okay, this is just, yeah, no, it ain't grabbing me. Okay. I'm just going to go find something else. I'll, so no, nothing in particular. I mean, there's many books that are supposed to be coming out. You know, um, let's see. There's uh, I can't think of any at the moment because I can't think at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot, man. I know you've been in a, under the weather. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you know. But hey, neither here nor there. But I am gonna let you go though, because I got dogs that are just pestering me to go do stuff and i, need I know to it. me too I got to get <laughs> hey man hey I, I i appreciate your time this morning be blessed all right brother i'll talk to you later Goodbye. bye man all right i'll leave it at that lots of george washington let me go just a couple more minutes here where did i go to here this is it right here uh dark tower i gotta i've i've got to listen to that one i hadn't even started it yet i've got the other three done well, that's his own here the subtle art of not giving a fuck i've read that one right there several times too the book don't mention jules Verne the other day shelby foot this guy's from over around uh uh greenville mississippi and i've listened to several of his and i 
And I'm uh, sharing my library with you. Some really good stuff. This library, I've been uh, gathering up books here in the past several years. Um, I love that book there. I've read it in both. He was just mentioning reading them both in reality. And uh, I'm reading them over and over again. Those are the ones that I read. Uh, yeah, I read that one. And I started it back because I love that one right there. It's a good one, too. Now, that's another one of my favorite, too. John Grisham's The Time to Kill and The King of Taurus. Both of those are good. I love all those early, those 90s and two, early 2000s uh, John Grisham's book, John Grisham books. Uh, you know, I used to, you know, that was even back to their characters was some of my, uh, even though I wasn't a lawyer, I, um, I, uh, you know, I was a business person. I, I always dressed exactly like I hear he would describe, you know, the blue shirt tie, you know, the blue shirt with the crisp, you know, yeah, I loved it. And that's another one of them too, right there, the hidden life of trees. That's probably the first one I bought through here. And I was like, wow, it was the first one. But that's where, look at that, the hidden life of trees, what they feel. I mean, that's some weird stuff right there. And that's my buddy I went to school with, Jeremy Sparks. Uh, that dude's a pretty amazing history, man, or uh, legacy, life history, man. He's a, uh, God, he was, uh, went to a little small town school, same one I did, Fountain Hill, Arkansas. And then he was, uh, he was uh, they call it a rodeo clown, but that's not what he calls it. That's not what they call them. You know, they're like a, you know, some kind of a, uh, oh my God, I can't believe I can't think of it right now, but it's not rodeo. <laughs> That's kind of, it's kind of insulting, isn't it? I don't know. What is another name for rodeo clown? I want to make sure I know what that is while we're out of here. Bullfighter. That's, that's another one. Uh, it's something else though. Uh, there's another name, Rodeo Clown, Bullfighter. There's another name for it than that. That's a horrible name, man. That's a bullfighter. Well, bullfighter. Just think about the difference in just those two, though. You know, I'm a Rodeo Clown. I'm a bullfighter. I mean, you're both the same thing, but, whew. Show don't sound like it. Well, anyway, happy hump day. Have fun. Be safe. I'm going to ease out of this thing. I can figure out how. There it is right there. There it is.